Hey everyone, it's Lizzie and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing before you leave. Also, if you do end up liking today's video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. So guys, we are doing another budget with a friend video. And I am just so excited for this one because she does budgeting and she's very organized. She just wanted a second perspective. And so that is what these videos are all about. So I plan on doing these budget with a friend videos every Friday. So it'll be budget with a friend Friday situation. <laughs> So if you enjoy that, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss out on a budget with a friend episode. So let's go ahead and introduce to you our friend here. So they are a household of two. They have two dogs and two cats. So animal lover. I love that. They do have a good amount of debt. Total balance is $44,422.04, which includes a Discover credit card and two vehicle loans. Now, one thing I did make a little note here is that her husband tends to use the credit card frequently and pays it off with his check. So the balance tends to go up and down. So I have some recommendations for this at the end. So stay tuned to that. And then they do have an emergency fund. It has roughly $1,900. So hopefully by this time, she might have a little bit more, but this is just from when she submitted the information to me. And then down here are some of the goals. So she wants to start sinking funds. She wants to have a holiday sinking fund. She doesn't have a balance in that yet. And they want to contribute about $100 every month. They want to save for a mower. They currently have $300 saved and their goal is to have $3,000 for that. And then they want to establish a car maintenance fund, adding about $20 a month for that and there's nothing saved specifically for that sinking fund. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the November um, calendar spread. I kind of just color coded it because right now I am filming this on the 18th. So obviously there's been paydays and there's been bills that have come out. So I highlighted them based on when they, or what bill, what payday, <laughs> sorry, what payday covered specific bills. So for example, uh, the beginning of the month, you know, you're going to cover halfway through the month and so on and so forth. So since I am currently filming this on the 18th, yesterday they had received a uh, income and then tomorrow when you're going to see this live you are also going to receive another paycheck so i have a breakdown of how i would lay out if i woke up in your shoes how i would plan out your budget so i use something called a bill tracker and these are available for free download on my website uh, the website is linked down below so if you want to grab yours you can feel free go ahead and do that so up here i marked that this is the bill tracker for the month of november and i love 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 <laughs> this set up. So what I do is up at the top, I have all of the paydays listed out. So if you can see here, I've combined two of the, the pays. And here's why, because less trips to the bank is much easier for me in, in my head. So for the third and the fifth, we're going to break down those bills. And then right here on the 17th and the 19th, which is when we're going to be budgeting out right now, we're going to plan out those bills. Okay. So on the side here, I have the due dates written down. I have what bill it is and the total amount. And then what you do is you'll highlight when you have to have that bill ready to pay. So that is really why I love this setup because I'm a visual person. I don't know about you, but I really like seeing that highlight because then it just triggers my brain to say, okay, do we have the total amount to pay this bill? You know, did something else come out, you know, to avoid being negative in the bank because we don't want to pay fees. So I really like the highlighter system when it comes to the bill tracker. And then when it comes down to that payday, you will then create your paycheck budget. So for the fifth, this is the first pay, which you've already paid. We've 
then paid these bills. So let me actually split the screen so you can see the bill tracker as well. So this is for the fifth. And so I just went down this first column here and I marked in all of those bills. So you can see that they line up exactly and then it gives you your total. I added the variable expenses. So we'll go over this, what her variable expenses are. Um, so she has groceries. They set aside about $160 every week. They have for their date night, $50. Each of them give themselves $20. And then they set $100 for gas. And then this right here is for her husband's credit card. When he gets paid, he wants to apply $200 towards that. And I did factor in a buffer for their checking account. I believe that this might assist in the overspending that may be happening with, with her husband uh, using the credit card and having it go up and down. However, you might wanna consider um, applying a little bit more for your personal spending. However, you have goals of like becoming debt free, saving for different things. So it's just, this is where you can kind of play with your numbers, I feel. But I definitely believe that having some sort of a, a buffer in your account for unexpected expenses, for those things that just tend to come up throughout the month is really wise. And then if you don't know, I love percentage budgeting. It doesn't work for everyone and I 100% can see that, that it doesn't, but it does work for us personally and I really like seeing how it could possibly work for others. So what a percentage budget is, is you take your total income, so in this case it's $1,900, so let me actually pull out my calculator. So you take your income, $1,900, and you multiply it by a percentage. If you are in debt, if you have a very low income, maybe start off living off of about 80%. Have that be your goal. And this will allow you to really be focused on your savings goals, your debt payoff goals. This is just a recommendation, guys, so take it with a grain of salt. But, you know, see if there's uh, things that you can maybe cut out if you're you know spending too much on food is a big one that a lot of people myself included spends a little more on and this is where you kind of you can kind of um, tighten up your budget a little bit so i am starting off for her because uh, i want to see if 70 percent will work for her so you multiply it by the percentage it could be 70 80 whatever the case is and it gives us 1330 as expenses she didn't mention anything about tithing or giving. You all know how I feel about tithing, uh, but if nobody mentions it to me, I'm just going to take it as if they don't tithe or they don't give. But giving is, is super important in my opinion. So you could take 10% of your income and apply it to, to giving or 5%, whatever you want, whatever your heart's desire is. And then the rest can be applied to goal. So in this case, I just put the full 30% towards goal, which is savings and debt payoff for her, right? So that comes to, you take the income and you multiply it by 30% and it gives us the $570. And so what we do is to see if we're within that 70%, you take the total fixed expenses of the 567, I'm just gonna leave it at the whole dollar, and then the um, 738 to see where we stand. So you see that? 1350. 1330 was the goal amount. So we're under that 70%. Isn't that like amazing to see visually? Like, wow, your living and your spending is below 70% of your income. That's fantastic. So then you can apply the difference towards your goals. If you happen to be a little bit over, maybe you can just take a look and see, hey, where can I possibly cut back? to save to reach the goals faster. And this is why I really love and am passionate about the percentage budget. I didn't come up with it or anything. It's something that I learned from Jordan Page, so I give her the credit for that. All right, then we have the sinking funds that she wanted. Remember what her goals were? We have holidays, we have the mower, and we have car maintenance. Those are the three things that she mentioned, so those are the three things that I'm gonna write in here. However, you could add 
if you wanted to, maybe like a miscellaneous, maybe like a home, just different things like that that may tend to come up. So review your budget and see where you tend to have those unexpected things happen and create a sinking fund for that and put a little bit amount throughout the course of the month. So $250 from this pay is going to sinking funds and this leaves $344 to budget for her goal. So this is the goal section. She wanted to save $100 every week. So we put that in there and then we have $244 for her to be able to apply for extra debt from the first pay of November, okay? But that has already passed. So let me just skip to what this month will be, or excuse me, this paycheck will be. So again, it's the same income, right? We did the 70%, this is the third pay of November. And then we're gonna go over here and look at this column. So for the 17th through the 19th, these are the bills that we've already pre-planned that we are going to set aside. So we have the Spectrum, her car, Farm Bureau, a Discover card, her car, her truck, um, house, phone, Hulu, those total $507.07, leaving $1392.93 to budget out for. Then of course, we have our variable expenses, her husband's credit that we are applying, and then that same buffer. So I just kept all of this the same. This all is the same over here. But because these um, expenses now have changed a little bit, we now have $416 to apply towards her goal. So we are again gonna put $100 for emergency fund and an extra debt payment of $316. So you kind of see how your budget changes as each payday comes along. So now we're gonna get into your husband's pay. So your husband, he gets paid every week so husband gets paid weekly, wife gets paid bi-weekly. So for the bi-weekly pays and that weekly pay, we're able to tackle more savings and we have more of a room to budget out for because there's more income for the month, for that week. But on the weeks that your husband gets paid, it's less of an income. So he gets paid $800 and so you have to prioritize your bills, you know, your bills, and the, the spending and focus on maybe the savings and sinking funds when you get paid as well because you saw how we broke it up and we had a lot more to be able to save for. So I feel, in my opinion, to just focus on your bills, right? Focus on your bills and if you happen to get a little sprinkle of extra income in there, a refund check, whatnot, then that's awesome and you, have, you can apply that towards those other savings goals and debts. Again, this is just my opinion. There's many ways to break down a budget. This is just the way that I would do it. So for your husband, we are now looking at the 24th, yes, 24th paycheck. So again, we have the 24th paycheck written in, the bills all written in um, on the bill tracker. I'm using that as my guide to break down the paycheck budget. So for this case, we can't really focus on that percentage method because he has it's a little bit less of an income and we wanna just really focus on paying the bills and the needs and taking care of you know, your regular spending. So this is how I would break down this budget. $416 is for the fixed expenses. We have $383.66 left to budget out for. So then we move on to the variable expenses. Cover your needs. You, have, you still have to get food. You're still going to be spending money right? We have to be real with that. So you can apply your allowance of $20, uh, your gas, and then I just factored in the remaining as your buffer. So if you looked back on the prior paychecks, we've applied about $100. So you might have still a little bit of a buffer that you didn't use when this payday happened. So if anything were to come up, you could still tap into that. That way you won't actually tap into your emergency fund for different things and utilizing that, utilizing a credit card because you have your buffer in place already. So $11.16 from this is just gonna go straight to buffer and this leaves you with your zero-based budget. Now for December, things change just a little bit. So let me actually flip to, um, to December and I am gonna show you the bill tracker, okay? So, this is the bill tracker 
for December and things kind of change a little bit. And it's nice because look at how many, one, two, three, four, five weeks are in December. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pays, okay? But remember, we combine three of them because you get paid bi-weekly, your husband gets paid weekly. It's just, it allows more ease, I feel, um, when it comes to your, your budget. Okay, so let me flip to the first paycheck. So here we are, first paycheck of December. We have your income. It's still the same $1,900 we're working with. And then we break down that percentage. It's the same. Our goal is to have our expenses be 70%, hopefully, and then 30% um, going towards goal. We look over here to the bill tracker, and then we go to through our fixed expenses. So I went down this column. We already pre-planned that, super nice, super easy. $480 is going to the fixed expenses. We still have $14.19.69 to budget out for. We're gonna go ahead and apply it to our variable expenses. All of that remains the same. Again, hopefully, maybe that $200 for your husband's credit may change and you might free up $200. I would hope that that buffer, again, has helped cover different costs. If you guys are wanting to get out of debt, maybe try to not have him spend too much. I know it's super hard, trust me, I get it. But um, see if he can have a little bit more restraints on some of the spending that happens on credit and use cash that's already on hand. Maybe start a sinking fund for him in his like outing or just give him more towards spending throughout the month. So I just kept this at $115 for the bud, the buffer. So this leaves $697 left to budget out for it. $697 you have remaining to budget out your, oh, if I can close this, to budget out your budget for it. Okay, so I'm just leaving this here the same because this is what your goal was. You wanted this to be kind of consistent. Same thing with your emergency fund, $100 every week. You can maybe increase this for this pay to 200. It all depends on how you feel. You can change up these numbers however you want. But if you really wanna be serious at your debt payoff, you have at this point, it would be over, it, it would now be over $2,000 um, since writing up these paycheck budgets that you have in your emergency fund already, which is awesome. And you're still able to apply extra debt payment. So for this, you can just play around with your numbers and see at the time, you know, what makes sense for you guys. Where are you gonna apply the extra debt payment? Do you want to apply it towards the debt that has high earning interest and you're paying so much in interest? Do you want to apply it to the less balance first and do the snowball? Have that discussion with your husband and see, you know, at this point in this season of your life, what makes sense for you guys? Because personal finance is personal. So my recommendations may not necessarily work 100% for you, but pick and choose what kind of stood out to you and, and, and do that and run with it for a little bit, see if it works. But just the fact, seeing this number, that you have $697 to put towards goals for savings or debt, that is amazing in one week. And utilizing the bill tracker where you can just visually see, I already have a plan for where my finances are. And I know you already do, because you told me that, that you already break things down, your larger bills weekly. That is fantastic. Now, if any of you budget friends have other recommendations, things that you noticed that I may have missed and that could possibly help someone in her or someone in her situation, definitely let us know in the comments. That is what this community is all about. We are here to encourage empower and inspire families and help them find freedom in their finances. That's truly what this is all about. So I really hope that you were encouraged, that this helped you. Again, you can always take screenshots of this if this is your budget and plug it in on the bill tracker. Again, that bill tracker is a freebie on my website. So go ahead and check that out. 
use it as many times as you want and i just love this and i hope that it inspired you to get on a written budget but do it in a way that makes sense to you and your family so that's everything for today's video and i will see you guys right here in a brand new video bye guys